Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for today for the opportunity to bring forth his truth. Now listen, his word, I told you yesterday, his word is his bond. And your word should be your bond, especially when your word and his word have become one. Praise God. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. You are the glory and the lifter up of our head. You are the one who have risen upon us and therefore we shine as light. Today I declare bodies are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. 1 John chapter 5. <clears throat> Oh, I love this. We, we, we stopped at verse 5 yesterday, so I'm going to read it again. Say, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, how do you come to believe that? Because the Word of God came to you with that truth. And the fact that you heard it and you were able to believe it. Now, there are many folks who can't even understand it, who can't even fathom it. They can't even comprehend. What do you mean, Jesus? How can you say Jesus? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How can a child, how can, so, how can a human being be the son of God? Do you know what you're talking about? You know, that's blasphemy. Hey, they, they cannot receive it. But you can receive it. Why? Because you are born of God. Hallelujah. You're the one who over. If you can believe that Jesus is, is the son of God if you can believe it see <laughs> you have what it takes to surmount every challenge that can come your way think about it if you have the ability in your heart to believe that Jesus is the son of God now not because a pastor told you if you have the capacity in your heart to believe that truth, it then means that there is nothing that will face you that you cannot surmount. You know why? Because how did you get to believe that Jesus is the Son of God? You heard His word. See, you heard the preaching of His word. You heard it. And when you heard it, you believed in your heart. That is the same way you will hear the solution to that challenge you find yourself in. And you will believe it and act on it and your victory comes it says it says who is he who overcomes the world the one who has faith who is the one who has faith the one who believes how do i know i believe if you can believe that jesus is the son of god then you believe you are a believer indeed this is he who came by water and blood jesus christ not only by water but by water and blood thank you jesus now what, what does it mean we came by water and blood and that's that's some long explanation <laughs> praise god i don't think i have time for that but but i have done a series on, on something like that before you know if you can call and and order for that but because that's going to take us into a whole new area uh, already but see, what's he talking about? He's telling you that Jesus came by water. And Jesus also came by blood. You can trace the bloodline of Jesus. Now, you know, when you study scriptures, you, you see in the book of Matthew, and then you see in the book of Luke, the genealogy of Jesus was traced down now in Matthew you will see it was chased down to Abraham praise God it was chased down to Abraham telling you that Jesus is carrying in him the blood of Abraham see? now when you go to Luke and try to trace the genealogy of Jesus in the book of Luke it traced him all the way to Adam and to God see because he got to set and then who is the son of Adam? And who is the son of God? Praise God. So he's telling you in two ways. Now those two genealogies are tracing Mary, his mother's lineage. That's true. Mary's father and going up. So when you read in the book of Luke, it says Haley. Haley was Mary's father. And he was tracing all the way to, to God. Now 
in 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 Matthew, he was traced in the lineage of Joseph, the father, the supposed father of Jesus, and he traced him all the way to Abraham. There's a reason for all these things. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, he's the one that came by water and by blood, and it is the Spirit that bears witness. Ah, ah. <laughs> You know, I, I'm trying to avoid going into some deep things here. You know, it's not everybody you see on the earth that came by water. Talk less of that came by water and by blood. Not everyone. But guess what? It is only the Holy Spirit who knows who is who. See? So that's why he says here, it is the Spirit that is the witness. The Spirit of God is the, is the one who bears the witness that Jesus came by water and by blood. It's the same Spirit of God that bears witness about us also if we came by water. You remember Jesus in John chapter 3 told Nicodemus, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit. He's saying the same thing here. He's saying the same thing. But here he tells you it is the Holy Spirit that bears that witness. So if you're born of water, if you are born of blood, it is the Holy Spirit that knows whether you are born of such or not. He is the one that knows. That's why John in Matthew chapter 3 told us that when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And then he says, he, he has a fan in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his flock and gather his wheat to his garner, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. See, praise God. So it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. There are three that bear. Now, actually, the, the, the old King James puts it this way. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Three bear record in heaven. Watch this now. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They are the three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word. Notice that he said the Son. There's a reason for that. He said the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. From eternity, these are the three that bear witness in heaven. So you have the Father, and then you have His Word. His Word, because that's the second thing that rules. His Word rules. It's by His Word He decrees judgment. So when His Word is given, it is his life and then you have the spirit of god who does all his work in bringing to pass every word that the father have spoken mm. the father the word and the holy spirit and these three are one and there are three that bear witness on earth the spirit the water and the blood now today ah, Sometimes these things are, are, are so deep, you're wondering how, how to make it simple so you don't confuse people. There are three that bear record in heaven, and it tells you the three. Then there are three that bear witness on earth, the water, the blood, and the spirit. And it just told us before, it says, he, he came by spirit, water and, and blood, and it is the spirit that bears witness. So when you read in scriptures in, in the book of Acts chapter 2, when it says clothing tongues like as of fire rested on each of them. He says rested on each of them. Rested on each of them. Didn't rest on them as a general group. He says it rested on each of them. And then he has said they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It rested on each of them. And that was the Lord thoroughly purging each one. If you are not of God in that room, he will not rest. So that's where the Holy Spirit gives the confirmation. Thank you, Jesus. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given 
of his son. So God gave a testimony concerning his son, which is the word of God that he spoke. Now, if you don't believe it, then there's a problem. If you don't believe the testimony of his son, then you have a problem. You're calling him a liar. Praise God. Yeah, that's what it is. It says, he who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God, because God has given a testimony of his son. Are you following what I'm saying? So do you believe that testimony? You remember Jesus was with the disciples and one day he prayed and God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. That's God's testimony concerning his son, Jesus. And today, the same God is testifying in our hearts concerning Jesus that he is the son of God. Now, if you don't believe that testimony, something is wrong. Because you're saying God is a liar. Because God has testified that he has a son. And his name is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 11. Now. And this is the testimony. Oh, King James says, And this is the record that God has given us eternal life. What's the record? The record is this. We have been given eternal life by God oh oh so in heaven there are three bearing a record on earth there are three bearing witness to the record that is being born in heaven and then he now comes in to say hey the record I was talking to you about what's the record this is the record that God has given us what eternal life see God has given us eternal life that's the record Verse 11, and this is the record that God has given on us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Wow. Now you understand why no other, there is no other name mentioned on earth that by which men can be saved. Only through Jesus. So say, is Jesus the only way? <laughs> there is no other way. Praise God. It's Jesus. <laughs> there is no other way to eternal life but Jesus because he said the life is in his son I told you one time the reason Jesus came the main reason Jesus came was not to come and die for us the real reason he came is to come and give us life what life this eternal life that he's talking about so in heaven Three are bearing record of, of that life. That God had decreed it. That eternal life belongs to us. And then he put that life in his son. Anyone who has the son has eternal life. Anyone who does not have the son, he cannot. He cannot. Verse 12 says, he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. As simple as, it is a he who calls the son. It is a he who has for as many as received him, received who? The son. To them he gave the power to become sons and children of God. If you've not received the son, if you don't have the son, you don't have life. You cannot have life. You're just roaming about aimlessly. That's what it is. May the Spirit of God help you today to understand this truth. Say, he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Life is as simple as that. Where do you locate yourself in this truth? Simple. If you don't have the Son of God, there is no life in you. There is no other way to any life. No life in you at all. You want life? Receive the Son of God, who is Jesus. Receive him into your heart, and you will have life in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, our time is already up. I pray the Son of God in you will begin to surely make meaning in your life today. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.